Welcome back, Nooblets. This video picks up right where we left off from the Capital stack. I'm even wearing the same shirt. So if you didn't watch it, make sure you check it out first. We're going to show you how the distributions to the lenders and investors are dictated by the waterfall. Super quick recap. Last time, I ended by showing you that you can buy a $10 million project with only $400,000 of your own equity. You'd need to raise $3.6 million of LP equity and borrow $6 million. Assume the debt is split into a $4 million acquisition loan, which is senior to a $2 million construction loan. Now let's say after year five, you finish construction, you stabilize the NOI, and you sell the building. After closing costs, you net $15 million. For simplicity, let's assume the interest payments were covered by the cash flow during the project. The waterfall dictates how the parties are paid out, and you can visualize it exactly like a cascading waterfall. Let's imagine the lenders are these graduated cylinders. You start the waterfall by pouring your sale proceeds into the senior loan cylinder, because remember, senior debt is first in line to get paid out. Once that $4 million obligation is fulfilled, the water continues spilling over to the junior construction loan, which is the next $2 million. Remember, interest was paid during the project, otherwise these obligations would be bigger. The water now spills over to the equity, which has a funny looking container because it's split 90-10. Because one common structure is to pay the LP and the GP principal back pari passu, or at the same time. So for every dollar of equity paid back at this point, 90 cents goes to the LP and 10 cents goes to the GP. At this point, everyone's got their original contributions back. The bank is happy, and they're out of the picture. The remaining profit of $5 million is paid back in a few steps. If you recall our IRR video, investors and sponsors pre-negotiate hurdles that the developer has to achieve in order to earn a promote, which is like a bonus. The hurdle is also called the LP's preferred rate, or PREF for short. If the investors decided that the hurdle was 8%, then the water spills over to another little cylinder for the LP, and the GP only gets their 8% annualized return after the LP does, in this tiny cylinder. I mentioned the GP gets a promote over the hurdle. One common structure is to increase the GP portion of the remaining profits to 20% instead of 10. In industry lingo, we shorten this structure to 80-20 over 8. So the LP gets 80 cents, and the GP gets 20 cents for every dollar paid out until the end. Of the remaining 3.12 million in profit, 2.5 million goes to the LP, and 625,000 goes to the GP. If you've been keeping score, total return to the LP was 7.79 million, or a 2.16 equity multiple, and total to the GP was 1.21 million, or a 3x multiple. If you watched our debt video, these returns are way higher than those examples. So now you see the power of combining debt and outside equity. And there are many variations on the waterfall structure like having multiple hurdles and multiple tiers of splits. We won't explain in this video, but check out the links below for further resources if you're curious. Of course there are downsides and added difficulties of putting deal structures together like this. As a developer, you're last to get paid in the waterfall, so naturally your risk is higher. And there's way more paperwork because you've got to provide tons of documentation to the banks and LPs that you may not have to in a smaller deal you do on your own. And banks and LPs will not work with you if you don't have a solid track record to show that you're capable of executing your business plan. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the button. We're going to put all the finance concepts together in the next video covering back of the envelope calculations. See you next time, Nooblets.